Some things are inevitable. Thanos, an extended bathroom excursion after a $35 order of Taco Bell, and having to drive behind a golf cart in a 55-plus community. The antithesis of all these things is this idiot. He believes he can achieve the hardest achievement in Dead Space. Join us in our descent through madness as we follow this idiot and discover if the little idiot who could can. Don't I'm sorry. die. I'm sorry about everything. Med packs. I just wish I could talk to lots of plasma cutter ammo. All... And lots of flamethrower ammo. I, can't believe I don't need to kill every enemy. I'm pretty it's sure. Strange. I think I can run by a decent amount of them. Such a little thing. I may have died. Like, ten times in medium. Yeah. But, I feel confident that I'm not gonna die. An impossible. Probably severely misplaced confidence, but that's okay. Our story begins aboard the USG Kellyon in the year 2508, en route to the USG Ishimura, a planet cracker space vessel. Our journey will follow an engineer named Isaac, a squishy sack of meat, with little ability to defend himself, but his greatest ability is his undeterrable will to find his mate. He is accompanied by his merry band of nitwits, who believe they are on a simple repair mission, but this could not be farther from reality. Upon traveling into what should have been a safe dock, they are quickly met with an impulsive urge to plant their ship firmly into the other, something which can spell disaster for meat sacks such as themselves. Everyone okay? Good. Currently, yes. My sanity after a little bit. The amount of pucker I'm gonna have, probably not. With the disaster averted, using the red button which says not to press, and a single fire extinguisher, the merry band of nitwits quickly form up and push into uncharted territory. A once thriving vessel now lights up like a Christmas tree, revealing more damage than even Riley Reed's rear end. Sadly for this group, an ambush was waiting, separating the meat sacks from one another, and we all know, meat sacks together strong. Let me out! Alone and with no way to defend his meager self, our engineer has no option but to run. And run he does. As fortune would have it, he stumbles upon a godsend. An item so valuable, it would become the staple piece of future titles. The plasma cutter is considered to be, by and large, the greatest tool our engineer could have obtained. He must use it to great effect, or his weak and fragile self will surely perish. Take that shiny. <laughs> Shortly after escaping certain death, our engineer is reunited with his fellow meat sacks. But it is not a happy reunion for a 20-foot gap does not allow them to rejoin each other. Instead, our engineer is tasked by the lead meat sack to replace the tram car. But to complete this task, he must first find the data board. Luckily for the lead meat sack, our engineer is a good little engineer. As our engineer traverses the ship in search of the data board, he comes to his first obstacle. He can sense danger, but this ability to sense danger leads to questions that no one was asking in the first place. Deadass though. Nope, yep. You're alive, okay, let's get rid of your body. I don't want that, I don't want that on, yeah. Lured me in with that ass. That was my one weakness. Great idea, I'm actually thinking. Does Nicole have a dumpy on her? Is that? These are the important questions that we want to know. Sure, who needs lights? If Nicole's got that dumpy. After returning the data board, our engineer begins his second task of replacing the tram car. Unfortunately for him, he is unaware of the mortal danger he is truly in. A simple miscalculation in the number of tools at his disposal will leave him fighting for his life. Oh, there's another one. Oh, oh no. Okay. 
It's already going so poorly. Please take your leg off. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Well, there went all of my confidence. Gone just like that. Upon completing the task given by the meat sack leader, our engineer returns to the weak link of the group, the one who was injured in the crash who no one has any attachment to. As to what happens to most weak links, natural selection takes its course when the exposed singularity core explodes from the local wildlife hitting it with their tails, losing their only means of returning to familiar hunting grounds. Our engineer is forced to return to the vessel. Luckily for our engineer, his weak and frail skin will shed into a slightly more robust and defensible body. He will need it, as his journeys will lead him to the medical bay to obtain the captain's spine phone, and then to the engine room as a rival group of meat sacks damaged the engines worse than Antonio Brown damaged his career. It is clear the stress of the situation is taking a toll on our engineer as he begins to sing to himself. Just keep flying, flying, flying. What do we do? We fly. Ooh. I want explosives, yes, I want explosives. There's going to be bad things that want my booty. Uh, I do not want to deal with this area. I know it's all bad, it's all scary. Everything wants to kill me, enemies come out of nowhere. It's just gonna be absolutely awful. The idiot is right for once. Our engineer will face his greatest challenge on his journey so far. Danger creeps around every corner, and a close call would leave our idiot a pair of britches short and spark the needed purchase of a new chair. Oh no, oh god, why? Holy god damn, my chair is ruined. Holy shit, no. Uh, I can't run past you, okay, just take your arm. God. Uh, this is really bad. Uh, take that. I can't get past you. Okay, shoot him in the leg, 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 shoot him in the arm, shoot him in the arm, shoot him in the arm, die. No, no, please, God, no, not like this. Oh. While our engineer's weak meat sack body has proven its resilience so far, he will yet again be tested, but this time, his ability to run. Sadly, meat sacks are slow in their locomotion, so a simple task will prove much more stress-inducing than need be. A single tickle from the spinning arms of death will lead to an instant death of our engineer, so he must be careful. In my medium playthrough, I died here. This time will be different, hopefully. Our engineer finds his second weapon of choice, a tool which much like its name suggests, throws flames. The reason our engineer chose this tool was due to its damage over time and its ability to deal with toilet nuggets and the stasis soldiers. After restarting the vessel's engines, the meat sack leader believes it's best to play bumper cars with the asteroids surrounding the ship. Fortunately, one of the group's meat sacks makes the lead meat sack aware the ADS cannons are offline, and playing bumper cars with asteroids is a smooth brain decision. The meat sack leader wishes to meet up with our engineer, but first our engineer must go on a shopping trip. Little does our engineer know, an ambush was lying in wait. No, 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 back. Okay, 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 that's great, 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 great. Oh my god. The lead meat sack tells our engineer he must divert power from other parts of the ship to fix the ADS cannons. A simple task considering our engineer has not failed once, but a new predator is about to make itself known. A predator whose powerful and robust body is exceptionally weak to left turns. Yeah, come at me, show me them cheeks. Didn't know mama raised a bitch. Um, four, three. Yay, 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 yay. My favorite ADS cannon. Not really, though. It's more of a get to there, get there back. Then you gotta go and turn the back on. Looking the wrong way. It is clear to see our idiot is slowly descending into madness. 
While his songs may be garbage, they seem to instill a false sense of hope and confidence. The same cannot be said about the break room. It would appear a rival group of meat sacks created a summoning circle of Stompy Stompy Swing Swing. Luckily for our engineer, he was a part of the Stompy Stompy Swing Swing Club in high school, and like any good little engineer, he will do anything for power nodes. Stomp. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Oh yeah! With the ADS cannons powered up, all that is left for our engineer is to reprogram them by flying out into space and shooting asteroids with them. Once again, a simple task for an engineer. Once our engineer completes this, he travels back inside, just when our idiot has a revelation which nearly ends our engineer's life. Playing the game the second time, you can definitely see the signs that, uh, that at least I missed the first time. No! No! No, get, get out of there. There's a creature. There's a creature. There's so many- Oh, fuck me. Ah, oh, god damn it. Driven by strong hormones to find his mate, our engineer heads to the chem lab, as with his keen sense of hearing, his mate has made herself known there. Unfortunately for our engineer, a rival meat sack male has lured our engineer into a trap. The rival meat sack male has clearly hoarded all the power nodes and invested them into stasis duration when he should have invested the stasis into his receding airline. Tragedy strikes once again when our engineer is greeted by an underling of the rival meat sack male. This underling is blessed with regeneration and will undoubtedly be a problem for our engineer for the foreseeable future. Clearly outmatched, our engineer has no choice but to run. Not like this, not like this, not like this, not like this. After being attacked by a savage group of toilet nuggets and barely escaping with his life, the rival meat sack male locked down the hunting grounds. Our engineer quickly reopened them and cleared the doo-doo air which was pumped in from hydroponics. This doo-doo air would become the top priority of our engineer as breathing clean air is rather important to meat sacks. As our engineer made his way to hydroponics, he once again shed his weak skin to become slightly less squishy. Before reaching hydroponics, our engineer needed to obtain fractionally distilled liquid air to create the enzyme which would aid in the removal of the doo-doo air. Unfortunately for our engineer, the rival meat sack male was one step ahead of him. His underling ambushed our engineer, but this time our engineer was out of options to run. Thinking quickly with his big wrinkly engineer noggin, he froze the underling and sent him off to cryo sleep. Run, 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 run. There we go. While on his way to hydroponics, our engineer decided to stop in the bathroom, for his lactose intolerant nature gave him no other options. Sadly for him, his pants would be a casualty this time. Bathroom trip. Okay. Bad toilet nuggets. Like a child learning his fruits and veggies for the first time, our 27-year-old idiot will also be taking his first steps in learning about fruits and veggies, a milestone which none could have hoped for. That's a mighty tasty corn right there. And some mighty tasty watermelons. That's some mighty tasty pumpkins. And Dr. some mighty tasty tomatoes. I don't like tomatoes. Not a big fan of pumpkin either. Watermelon's cool though. Now with the liquid nitrogen inserted and the enzyme ready, our engineer must travel around hydroponics and insert his enzymes into the wheezers. A noxious but important task, for without clean air, the meat sacks will surely perish. Still, a much larger threat lurks from the shadows. Doing my crap, walk down the ship. It's just a long corridor where I gotta poo. No, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're not taking me today. I will not allow it.
Insta deaths are my biggest fear for the run. After inserting his enzyme into all of the wheezes, our engineer prepares to square off against a 10 kiloton beast, a creature of grand size and strength, armed with multiple tentacle mouths. This will surely spell disaster for our engineer. As fortune would have it, this monster performs worse than Kirk Cousins on Monday Night Football. With a set of simple maneuvers and repeatedly unloading in its mouth, the creature is outclassed by our little engineer who could. Our engineer's next objective was to head to the mining deck and obtain the SOS beacon. As always, a simple task turns out to be not so simple. Our engineer made his way around the mining deck, being careful to avoid the booby traps laid by the miners, as well as changing professions from an engineer to a janitor. Our engineer even rode a gondola through predator-infested lands, but why you may ask? Currently pumping through our engineer's body is a complex hodgepodge of hormones, as his mate is nearby. Sadly, she is acting rather strange, but the male meat sack, due to his blood not properly fueling his brain, does not get the hint. Isaac. Hey girl, how you doing? Hmm. Did I do something wrong? Oh my god. I can't believe you're here. I Me never either. Upon retrieving the SOS beacon, our engineer travels to a highly dangerous area. He must destroy the gravity tethers which hold the chunk of rock and place the SOS beacon on it as well. While this may seem like a simple act, a trap of death stands between him and completing his task. A simple miscalculation in the swing of the arms on the rock will mean instant death. Okay, another great place of instant death if I fuck this up. Just don't mess it up. Okay. I don't trust you. That's definitely not the way I want to die and ruin the run. Now, with his tasks completed in the mining deck, our engineer would shed his skin once again and become one step further away from Feeble. Our engineer then turned his attention to the comms array, as a passing by military vessel patrolling in the middle of nowhere seemed to be the meat sack's saving grace. The engineer, naturally being big brained, thought this kind of suspicious, but his inability to question things any further did not seem to be a problem at the time. So with a heave and a hoe, he fixed the comms array so contact could be established between the two meat sack tribes. As bad luck would strike again, opening the blast doors would reveal the 10 kiloton beast which our engineer slayed by unloading into its mouth earlier is ready for round two. Seeing as his below average plasma cutter did not cut it the first time, he would be forced to call upon other tools, the much larger cannons. With these cannons now unloading into the soft spots of the 10 kiloton beast, it would only be a matter of time before it would be finished. And finished it was. Just, just unload everything into it. Yes! I like general encounters with necromorphs are much more dangerous than the Leviathan. At least that's how it feels. Exiting zero gravity. Oh man, let's go. Another one down. With the 10 kiloton beast slain with the help of large cannons and a small plasma cutter, our engineer activated the long range antenna to communicate with another meat sack tribe. Unfortunately, again, it would appear not even a ship filled with space warriors could kill the necromorphs. Yet our weak, feeble, and heavy-footed engineer has drastically increased the number of quadriplegics on the Ishimura by himself a true testament to his abilities as an engineer. With the docking procedures not going according to plan once again, our engineer would journey on to the USM Valor in an attempt to borrow without permission their singularity drive, but another challenge would await our engineer first. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Okay. Don't shoot the explosive. This is my next big run killer that I'm terrified of. But I think if I can get through this, I'll be decently set. I have stasis. Okay, good, good, good. Let's hit you. Drop your arm off. Drop your other arm off. 
please. Okay, okay, I don't want you to move. You're dead. Okay. Okay. Throw you in there. And let's get this bad boy put away. Okay, let's go. Let's freaking go. I feel much better now. I think uh, as long as I can survive the USM Valor now with all the soldiers with the stasis. That's why I picked the flamethrower in particular was because I can just hold the button down and their stasis will go off. Okay. I think we're going to be good now. I think the idea is to give me a hand, not a leg. I don't know how useful that's actually going to be to me, but I appreciate the offer. You're a nice guy. Must be a team player. They say teamwork makes the dream work. After putting the nuclear bomb back in the ship's pocket, our engineer resumed his task to reach the singularity core. Upon reaching it, the meat stack leader has completely lost his mind and gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. He meets a violent end by throwing himself and a now morphed version of Chen into the core and going snap, crackle, pop. Our engineer seizes the opportunity, borrows without permission the singularity core, and makes his daring escape through the USM Valor. Barely escaping certain death once again, he decides to enjoy a nice game of bonk before safely resting on the long range antenna. I got it. Ooh. Now I'm feeling pretty good. Now that chapter nine is done, it's just 10, 11, 12. And I don't think, can't remember if there's any real big ins. There's still a, a tentacle, I think, left to deal with, which can be an instant death. But outside of the instant deaths, I'm feeling pretty good about myself, if I do say so. It is good to see our simple idiot's confidence at an all-time high. Our engineer, while on his way to the executive shuttle, is interrupted once again, and has been tasked by the new meat sack leader to find the crew keycard and reach the marker. He quickly stumbles upon an intense game of stompy stompy swing swing, where it appears no one won and then partakes in the age-old tradition of playing Z-Ball while everything around him crashes and burns. If Steph Curry could shoot as well as our engineer, then the Warriors probably wouldn't have blown a 3-1 lead over the Cavs. Oh, no. I do not condone that. Dude, this flamethrower straight melts people. Holy good God. I really regret not up upgrading this in my first playthrough. <laughs> my God, this thing is crazy. As our journey has progressed, the extended exposure to the marker has begun to take its toll on our idiot. Not only has he become a pyro, he is also quickly descending into madness. <laughs> 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 I lost the laughing match. Look what happens. Watch the children burn. Burn. Okay, he's burned. Good, good, good. Let's go to the deluxe bathroom. How deluxe is it? Someone left credits on the crapper. Pretty deluxe. For the last time, our engineer shed his skin. What once was a weak, squishy outer shell with a gooey interior is now a slightly less weak outer shell with still a gooey interior. As our engineer traversed the area, he came upon another, rather crazy fellow meat sack. This meat sack informed him that everyone would die unless the executive shuttle was used to return the marker to the planet as a giant tentacle monster was upset his favorite coffee table decoration was stolen. Being the good little engineer we are, we agreed to help, as we are great at fixing problems. Install the go fast part. Shoot some things. <laughs> After installing the singularity core and listening to our idiot choke on his own spit, 
the last encounter with the rival male meat sacks underling takes place. While freezing it earlier was not enough to kill it, a whole lot of fire from a test burn on the executive shuttle's engines was. Let's go! Yeah! Burn! With the destruction of the rival male meat sacks underling, the rival would tentacle our engineer before the two would square off in the only way meat sacks know how to, a lackluster name-calling match. You bastard! Yeah, well, you smell like celery. Freak conversions! Make us whole! Okay. Last tentacle of death. Last one. Okay. We gotta aim well. This cannot be where we die. This cannot be it. I'm so close to convergence. Bring out the pistol. Uh... Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Let's go! Oh lord, yeah! Suck it! Now that the rival male meat sack is defeated, along with instant death tentacles, our engineer travels towards the hangar, as this is where the marker was rudely taken. This area that our engineer is in is rather dangerous, but by using his environment to his advantage, a rather dangerous situation becomes rather mundane. Hey, I think that's clear. I have a bunch of throwing poles, which I'm gonna need. Okay, let's go. Two more tentacles down. Okay, okay, this is doable. This is very doable. We are getting there. We can do this, we can do this, we can do this. I I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Let's do this. We're so close. Yes, yes, we know, we know, we know. With the marker now removed from the flesh pile and the executive shuttle on its way, our engineer makes his way to the docking area. It would seem while our engineer has nerves of steel, our idiot, on the other hand, seems to have lost part of his confidence. I'm actually pretty worried about chapter 12, I'm gonna say, because there's so many enemies and so many just ways to simply die because you're just getting surrounded. Outside of that, the final boss battle I'm not too worried about, so hopefully with any luck we can get there. As fate would have it, our new meat sack leader has betrayed our engineer. A betrayal no one could have seen coming. The meat sack leader flees with the ship, but fortune would favor our little engineer who could. Our mate makes herself known and has a plan. With hormones pumping through our engineer, he runs as fast as his big boots will allow him to so he can finally meet her. Oh baby, how you doing? I tried to find you. Half the Ishimura is coming apart and the other half swarming with those things. How'd you get here? You cleared the way. I can always count on you. Not this time. Daniel screwed me over. You couldn't have known she would take the marker. She left us to die. There's still hope. You can recall the shuttle and remote pilot from here. Bring back the marker and we can return it to Aegis 7. You can make us whole again. While becoming whole again with his mate may be his mate's top priority, our engineer has his sights on the prize. Willie, though, will he? That's a good question. I don't believe you. Nothing like being double-cheeked up on the USG Ishimura. Do you mind, you daft idiot? You didn't hire me to be interrupted while reading this script. Anyways, as I was saying, while becoming whole again... Oops, I already read that part. Recalling the stolen ship back to the Ishimura, returning the marker to Aegis Seven and then living a peaceful life with his mate. Unfortunately for our engineer, a simple task is not so simple. Sun's out, guns out, let's do this! I don't even care. I'll just run back and forth and dodge you. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> feel like I just pushed Nicole down and ran from a bear. That's what I feel like. She's gonna have to get through him. Luckily, she is my girlfriend, and if I can do what I can do, she can do what she can do, which I don't know what that is. Kablu. And Kablu. And run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. Still running. Let's get to the ship. Continue. Okay, last stage. The boss battle, not worried about. I got plenty of health, I got plenty of ammo. What I'm worried about is everything before the boss fight. Because there are a lot of enemies that want to kill me and I don't want to die to them. We will be whole again. That we will, baby girl. I'm a surgeon with this thing like you say. Shit. I don't know why I speak sometimes, I'm sorry. For the last leg of our journey following our engineer, he will be slowly escorting the marker to the excavation site while a giant rock looms over their heads as the gravity tethers are failing on the Ishimura. Hordes of enemies will do their best to stop our engineer, but he is no longer the weak and frail creature we began our journey with. Burn, baby, burn! Everything burn! You especially, wee child! He has since become something just over marginal. Yeah, that's what I thought. And you too, you want some of this, you can burn too. Everybody can burn. It is always good to remember, death can strike at any time, as well as crapping your pants. Oh, oh my god, I just... Oh my god. Oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. Oh my god. Why? On the last leg of the journey. Oh. Ow. I forgot about you. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Oh, why why did you do that? Shoot, 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 Stasis, please. Stasis. Run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. Uh, I gotta reload, I gotta reload, gotta reload. I'm... Oh, God, oh, God. I am not doing okay. I am not doing okay in the least. After finally returning the marker to the coffee table of the giant tentacle monster, our engineer is met with a harsh reality. The female meat sack, which he believed to be his mate this whole time, is actually not his mate. Devastated by this terrible news, our engineer decides to drop a multi-trillion ton payload to end the planet. First, our engineer must open up a can of whoop-ass on the ungrateful tentacle monster who was still upset even though its coffee table decoration was returned. The ending boss battle is no match for our engineer. Its moveset is very predictable, and with simply walking side to side, it can be defeated. Sadly for our idiot, he has terrible tracking with a mouse. So the last hurrah is what scares him the most. Okay, okay, okay. One more. One more, uh, just pick me up. Okay, okay, we gotta hit this. This is not how I am gonna die today. Oh, come on. I, I can't fucking hit this thing, got it. I, I, please, please, please. <laughs> I thought I died. I thought I was gonna die. Please, please. My heart can't take this. Are you, you're dead, right? You're dead. Please tell me you're dead. Okay, okay. Oh, we're good. We're. Let's go. No deaths. One attempt. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. One attempt, no deaths. Oh, okay. Let's get on. Okay, let's get on the ship. I don't. I. I, I just want the freaking achievement. I want it done. So I can start breathing and do some breathing exercises. 
so my heart rate can go back to normal because I thought I was going to die when I got picked up by that tentacle because I kept missing and I thought that was going to be it. Come on, Isaac, get them thrusters going and let's get out of here. Let's go! Yes! Oh, I can start breathing again. I swear to God, I was gonna die on that last freaking tentacle when it picked me up because I kept missing it. I thought that's how it was gonna be. And when I shot it and it didn't explode in the last one, or I didn't realize that it exploded, I thought that was it. Oh, we've done it. We have done it. We have ascended the mountain. We have reached the peak, and we have looked down upon the challenge which was set out. And we have beat it. Oh, we have done it. You. We are Sorry. untouchable. Just as all stories have a beginning, they have an end. This is the ending of our journey following our engineer through his trials and tribulations on the Ishimura. What our engineer will get up to in the future is a story for a different time and place. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe as it really helps our idiot out. Until next time, thanks for watching.